They say tyres are the only point of contact between the car and the road. Is that true? Of course it's true, which is why tyres are super important. And this is also why I'm making this video today to ensure that you know everything you need to know about car tyres. So yeah, without further ado, let's talk rubber baby. Now, if you're wondering why on earth am I filming a car tire video inside my house instead of outside, the reason for that is because they are having renovation outside and the background noise is just too loud. So I have no choice but to film inside here. At least this area is cozy. Eh? Okay, I'll be explaining about this tire in two parts. The first part will be this area right here, which is called the side wall that houses all the important information regarding the tire itself. And the second part will be this track here which is the outer circumference. Okay, let's start with the most basic info I think everyone should know, but I'll just explain anyways. So the brand of this tyre is Continental and the model of it is MC6. So the full name of it is Continental MC6. The next important info will be the car tyre size. So you see, there are three different numbering here. 205, 45 and 60. So 205 represents the tyre width or thickness from here to here. So it's 205 mm thick. And then the next one will be the aspect ratio, meaning the thickness of the side wall. So in order to calculate this, basically it's in percentage. It's 45% of 205. So you do the math, you get 92.25 mm. So the side wall here is 92.25 mm thick. And then R basically is the tire construction. So it's radio. And then 16 is the rim diameter. Basically for this particular tire, you can only fit 16 inch rims. Usually after the tire size, you have the load rating and speed rating, but it's not here. Instead, it's here. So you can see, it's the, here's the size. And then here, 87. So this is the tire load rating, means how much this tire can carry in terms of weight. So in this one, you have to search on Google. So basically just type tire load rating and then it comes out with a table. So you see 87 represents what? So if I'm not mistaken for this tire, 87 represents 545 kg, which means this tire can, per tire can hold up to 545 kg load. And then W is the speed rating. Basically what's the maximum speed this tire can go. So for this tire is 270 km per hour. Moving on from the tire size, we have this. So here, DOT stands for Department of Transportation. Basically, every tyre needs this for it to be legal on the road because it meets the safety requirement for this tyre. And then the next one here will be the manufacturer code, which I don't think you need to know. And then this one is very important. So this one is when this tyre was manufactured. So 43 is the week and then 19 is the year. So this tyre is manufactured on the 43rd week of 2019 which means towards the end of 2019. A lot of people, when they want to buy a new car tire, they'll definitely look at this because they want their tire to be manufactured as new as possible. But actually, that's not the case because I've read a research that Michelin actually did a test where they compare two tires. The first tire is basically a tire that's been used on the road for a year and another tire which is left unused and on the shelf for about 10 years old and both showed the same driving characteristics and performance. So yeah, it doesn't matter that much, but yes, I don't blame you if you look at this because yeah, you want, always want the latest one as possible. So if your tire is one or two years old, it's fine. You don't have to worry. Next will be the characteristics of this tire. So you have three different info. You have the tread wear, you have the traction, and you have the temperature. So tread wear basically indicates how fast this tire wears out over time. So 340, the higher the number, the better. So let's say if it's 680, that particular tyre lasts twice as long as compared to this tyre but that only applies if you are comparing the, within the same brand so let's say if you are comparing different brand one brand 340 compared to another brand 340 may not last the same time and then next will be the traction this indicates how much grip this tyre has during a rainy day or wet surface so you have three, four different categories AA being the best and then you got A B and C. Temperature basically indicates the resistance to heat build up of this tire. So you have three categories as well. You have A being the best, which means it heats up not that much. And then you have B and C. C being the worst means it heats up very fast. The last info I'm going to show you on the side wall will be here. So this basically shows you how much pressure you can pump up to for this tire. So it's either 340 kPa maximum or 50 psi. Then here is the max load. As I mentioned earlier, you can see either from the tire load rating or here it shows as well, 545 kg. Okay, now let's talk about treads. 
Now, these are called tread patterns. So you can see all these grooves. So these are called tread patterns. And there are three different types of tread patterns. The first one is symmetrical, which means that let's say you put a line here, here and here will be the same. And then you have asymmetrical, like this tire right here. So this side here is different from this side, you can see. Here is like that, here is like that. And then the last one will be directional, which means it has a V-shaped pattern. Usually if you want something more comfortable or sometimes more affordable, you would go for symmetrical tires. But if you're looking for something more performance oriented, you go for asymmetrical tire like this. The reason for that is because this is the inside and this is the outside. So basically this area here is for water evacuation and here this is for the performance side. So basically what happens is if you look here, it has a thicker tread block which makes this side wall very rigid so that let's say if you're cornering hard, this whole side wall doesn't flex which provides you with the optimum grip and stability during cornering. Or if you're looking for something which offers very good grip on the dry and wet surface, you go with directional pattern, but that will sacrifice in terms of noise and also in terms of comfort. Last but not least, if you want your tire to last as long as possible, there are two things you need to do. Number one is to always regularly check your tire pressure and to maintain it because let's say if your tire is underinflated which means not enough air inside then you eat up the outer track or if it's overinflated which means too much pressure inside and then you eat up the middle so this will significantly reduce the lifespan of your tire if you don't know what tire pressure to pump for your tire you just have to go to your car's driver door seal you'll show there or if not you can look at the vehicle's manual book it will show usually for SUVs it will be around 35 PSI or normal sedan, all those smaller cars will be around 30 PSI. Yeah. And number two will be alignment and balancing. So let's say if you look at your car tire and you notice that you have uneven wear surface, that means here wear more than this side, and that, but then your tire pressure is correct, that's when you need to do alignment and balancing. Or let's say if your steering wheel goes one side or your steering wheel is shaking, yeah, all these, that means you have to do alignment and balancing. So for your tires to last as long as possible. Yeah. And that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys find it informative. Hope you guys have a better understanding of what this black piece of rubber which every car needs. Yep. So with that said, I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.